everybody and welcome to Movie Couple Live. This is a show where we talk about the latest in movie culture, movie culture, movie news and pop culture. I mix those two words. <laughs> Happy Saturday, everybody. Too much Taiwanese breakfast. My mind's a little fuzzy. I am trying to not get in my food coma. But nonetheless, welcome to today's show. We have tons to talk about today, including what project, what secret Marvel project Scarlett Johansson is producing. We're also going to be talking about how Delroy Lindo has joined the cast of Blade. And of course, live action Sabine, she is coming. Casting has been announced. We're also going to be talking about some of the D23 announcements. Yeah, tons of them. Um, not worth waking up at 5 a.m. for, which we didn't, so I'm kind of glad. But we were able to catch up to a lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them. It was very different than what I thought it was going to be. But They, they really focused a lot on the theme parks. Yeah. Which is actually kind of cool to hear some of the stuff that's coming to us, some of the stuff that's coming to um, Disney World as well. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, and you know, I just thought that for for this D twenty three, like I just thought they were all kind of going to sort of be similar to the twenty nineteen one. That it was all it was going to be, you know, more not just theme park news, but also movie news and TV show like Disney Plus news. And maybe that's why we got kind of just a little bit. Of announcements on Disney Plus Day, but it turned out to not be the case, which is fine because we stayed up a, bit, a little bit late, late last night watching some of the Cowboy Bebop um, stuff. We're on episode four, so don't ruin what comes for, for episode five to ten for, for us because we still have a few more episodes to get through. But I uh, hope you guys are doing really well today. We are having, I mean, like I said, we got a little Taiwanese breakfast earlier. So my tummy is feeling great. I'm a little, little <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a lot sleepy. I'm, I'm like wanting to take a nap after this, but I can't because I've got some editing to do. So welcome to everybody to the show. And right off the top, we're going to go ahead and um, get to uh, Marvin Martin's super chat today. Marvin, thank you so much thank for you your so continuous much, support. Thank you so, so much. This first one says Marvin Martin. <laughs> Oh my Sorry, god! I just looked at the is picture. It the, it's like a it's, Deadpool, but on the beach, <laughs> like with the pose, very never, like. Never hello. thought I would see Marvin the Martian in a like a speedo line. Um, what are they, like yeah, doing the sexy pose yeah, on the beach yeah, kind yeah. of a thing. How so funny! Thank you, Martin Marvin Martin, for bringing that to our attention and now <laughs> seeing something that I never thought I'd see in my life. So, if you're a first time viewer to the show, Marvin usually on our. Um, live streams where I recommend a variety of things, whether it's video games or books or just YouTube videos, movies, anything like that. Some of which we have heard of, some of which we haven't. So it's always fun. But Marvin, what you're doing is adding to our ever growing list of stuff. Like I don't even think I've gotten to his very first recommendation yet, but we are, we have a, we have a list going and it's, you know, really great. I think for the viewers as well to kind of take a look at this and say, Oh, what is this? I want to check it out. So let's go ahead and start with this one. He says video game. Sinking City. Ooh. Ooh. Books. Uh Karen Mala Kingdom Beyond. Chronicles of Brawlerloxus. Brawl <laughs> oh gosh. These Challenging are some me with interesting, the, with, with these this are some word interesting here. names that are in this recommendation, I have to admit. Yeah. Those are intense names. And we got some more as well. We have um Witch of Blackbird Pond. Island of Blue Dolphin and Unicorns of Balinor. Those are all. When well, you all, say unicorn, I'm like automatically in. Unicorn where? You're saying in, one of done. Wendy's favorite favorite words. mystical animals. <laughs> yeah, a unicorn is kind of Wendy's spirit animal. The last unicorn. Oh God, I love that movie. And uh, for his second super chat, he says, "I can't yet bring myself to watch, and there are some controversies around it, but I was inspired to join the good fight." By Jamie uh, Eden. I'm not. I don't know much about Eden. Jamie. So, oh, I actually haven't see. seen that one yet either. Um, there's a lot of controversy around it. Controversy. Con what I say? Con Did I, I pluralize I know, it? I don't know. I know. I think you said something weird. It's very possible. It's My pronunciation of certain Eden. words doesn't always come out uh, correctly. I'm just gonna look up Eden really quickly. Oh, and we're a little, a little off to the side there. So let me just. Oh, wait, oh here, right, let me. It was it me just scooting. It's very possible. Sometimes I kind of start leaning to no, one it's side just, or the other. I don't think. It's just... <laughs> and well, oh, does it? There we go. I think it's that. Does that look better? For now. No, we shifted a little. There we go. There. 
All right. So Eden, it's a 2012 movie. And it's about oh, really? a Korean American girl abducted and forced into prostitution, so human trafficking, essentially. I can see has... how that can have some intense uh, conversations around. Yeah, it. definitely trigger warning there a bit. Um, has to agree to her captors' demands to survive. Ooh, I don't know if that's something I can watch. What are the demands? I don't want to know. Hmm. Were you listening? Oh no, I'm sorry. I was also reading through the chat. The demands. Oh. So it has to agree to her captors' de captors' demand to survive. Oh uh, well, that's also part. I mean, you kind of have to. What when you're a slave like that, it's kind of like yeah, whatever they say to do, you have yeah. to kind of do it. Yeah, I think it's it. You know, um, it's good to be aware of things like that. That really does happen literally everywhere to um, tons of people. But I think to sometimes watching it, it that's why it's, it, there should probably always be like a trigger warning a little bit. Um, but uh, you know, I appreciate the. Oh my god! I'm like trying not to watch the trailer because the trailer plays a little bit when you look it up. So I'm like trying, trying not to watch. But in any case, Marvin, thank you so much for your recommendation. We will be sure to screen cap these and to make sure we check it out. All right. Vanja says wanted to super chat this, and uh, for some reason I can't. Wendy and Dustin, how do you make the most of your days? 50k and beyond. We're, We're almost, almost at 50k. There. We're almost at 50k. We're almost there. I assume I would like to think that maybe by Christmas we will hit 50k. Which I think if we were going to invite other YouTubers and streamers to to um, to celebrate, just randomly drop in as their schedule allows, is going to be a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. because it's the holiday season so so we'll see who we can uh bring in but vanja thank you very 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 much yeah and there's a lot of things that we do i mean while we're i mean not only do i have my normal job that i go to but between uh twitch and video reactions and watching all of i mean because also wendy's start, uh, starting to get in a lot of for your consideration stuff oh as a matter gosh. of fact we have a whole pile of boxes here that we want to open in front of you guys so you guys can see yes. just some of the promotional material that we get sent so we can actually talk about these certain movies and certain products and properties that are coming out um one of the ones that we just recently dove into yeah was mitchell's um versus the machines and oh my gosh, if you get a chance to see that on Netflix, guys, I think that might really be a contender for best animated movie of the year. It is an it's amazing. Ex it's and excellent. It really does really kind of excellent. follow. You can tell once, I mean, once you hear that it's from the guys who did Into the Spider Verse, and then you watch this, there's like, they're completely different. But you can see the style and the um, heart that is in it that is from the same kind of minds. But it's so different and it stands on its own so amazingly well. Yeah. I highly recommend it. So um, they were, I think it was Netflix that sent over this nice box. So Dustin's going to go ahead and bring it over. I'm going to push our laptop yeah. back just a little bit uh, and open this box. So it, it is on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, you really should. Uh, it's a very... It's a very current type of of uh, of topic, stories, and characters. Even the way they animated everything, it's mm -hmm. so current, and you can definitely see like, okay, yeah, I can see like little nods to Spider Verse just in the style of animation, not in the storytelling. I also really like just how meta it is, 100%. how it does kind of break the fourth wall every now and again, and how it really does seem like she, like the main girl in this movie is kind of making a movie out of the movie that she's telling you of the story. <laughs> and I just think it's brilliantly done, lots of fun. Mm -hmm. And it is definitely something that grown-ups will enjoy, kids will enjoy. And I highly recommend it if you guys have not seen it yet. Yes. So let us open this box of awesomeness. Yeah. So there's, this is the Mitchells versus the Machines. And of course, We've got the DVD here, which I was so excited to get. I was like, oh, we need to watch it immediately just so you have a little bit of taste on like what the uh, animation style looks like there. And it's it's like, I mean, just reading some of the quotes here, the pull quotes from fellow journalists and critics like, you know, best animated movie of the year pushes animation to bold new places. Like I could could not w agree with that more. Uh, I really see. couldn't tell you like this. The cool thing about this animation style is the fact that it really 
like you can't say, oh, it's like this or like that. I mean, we can say it's it has got a soundtrack too. Some of it's similar to Into the Spider Verse, but it really does kind of create its own genre of animation. Mm-hmm. So I really do love how they actually animated this and how they just broke new ground on everything. Yeah. Now, for those of you who have seen the movie, you'll know the sentimental value of this moose. It's so cute. And I remember when I first opened the box, I was like, oh, and this was prior to me watching the movie. As soon as you saw the movie, I was like, <laughs> I'm keeping this forever. Mm-hmm. And we've also got a whole bunch of stickers from the movie. And because, you know, the main character is trying to go to like film school. Film school. She's very artsy. She's expressive. Um, she makes her own her own movies and she uploads it to YouTube. It's amazing. And we have a this is like a picture book, I think. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. different art from, from Sony the movie. animation. And th- it's great because there is many different kinds of animation in this in this movie. Oh, that is so cool. It shows all of the different animatic. I mean, what are they called? Um storyboarding. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, it's re- and also just the story itself really does a good job on touching your heart, on making you just feel great about this family. And they do a really good job on attaching you, get, growing attachment to the family. So all the- they have a little little note that came out of it, too. I'm going to read that later. Because I think it pertains to the book. It, in all of these boxes, they always have something like this, the packing material, and it gets it everywhere. Gets everywhere. <laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, in another package that I opened, they had something similar, but it was um, brown. They're long and brown. So one, I didn't um, get all of it in the trash. So one was sitting by the door, and I freaked out. I thought it was like a long centipede or something like that. And I was getting ready <laughs> to right. throw a shoe at it, and then, because I didn't have my glasses on, you guys, and my nose, my nose that my eyes are terrible. So uh, naturally, I freaked out, and then Dustin's like, it's just a it's piece just, of paper. Like, it's just why well, I didn't know. Just one of these little dangly thingies. And of course, we got the script. Whoa. For Mitchells versus the machine. Wow, really? Ooh. With like a nice little like linen cover. Yeah, look at that. You guys can see. So if you guys get a chance, go on to Netflix and check it out. It is a great movie and highly recommend it. Yes. And I wouldn't be surprised if it is nominated or at least wi- or wins. It'd be funny the, if um, the same people who won oh, I would an Oscar it. for uh, I lo- uh, Into the Spider-Verse wins for Mitchell and the Machine. Because they are Vin- such... Mitchell in- versus the Machine. It's such... They are such incredible con- I mean, creators. Yes. They really are. They take um, the idea of animation and just put it in a whole new world that we have not seen before. Yeah. And... Uh, amazing work. Kudos to them for their first, I mean, not their first, but their two big movies, both probably being winning and winning and nominating for the second one. So yeah. I had lots of fun with this movie. MK says Monchi! <laughs> <laughs> dog, pig, dog, pig, loaf of bread. <laughs> they couldn't say that about Navi. Navi, Navi, uh, I don't think would have that dog, effect. Dog, dog, fluffball. Snowball. <laughs> it doesn't flow quite the same. Nah, no, not quite. Not Anyways, quite like thank you so much to Sony and um, Sony Animation and Netflix. For, I don't know if Netflix sent it over, but I'm going to say thank Sony for sending that over, and I'm keeping this forever. <laughs> All right, what is next? Okay, so we've got another. Oh my goodness, this another, one's really heavy. This one's really heavy. It's from Netflix, and again, this is all for your consideration. <laughs> so it's movies that Dustin and I will have to uh, watch. Netflix. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know if this fits on my lap. Okay. We will. It might fit on my lap if I scoot back. Oh, I got it. So here, let's see if I can turn the sides here. You're going to have to see because I'm going to. Ooh. Well, this is from, okay, the from hand of- The Hand of God. This is from director Paolo uh, Sarantino. So we've got the DVD right here. Uh, that adds to, it takes away from what I was going to watch originally tonight, and I might be watching this instead. So it is a foreign film, I believe. Uh, there's a note there from the director. We've got the DVD that I will definitely check out. And I think this is what's making it so heavy. Oh, my God. That thing, yeah. Oh, yeah oh my, that, that, that this looks, is really heavy. Oh, and this. Oh, my gosh. This is really heavy, okay, too. Okay, put that down so we can put the box down. I'm going to go oh. ahead and open this. Yeah, there's nothing else. I'm going to get rid of this giant. We don't usually box. make it a habit of, like, doing so many unboxings in one live stream, but we thought we'd get it all done here. Oh! Holy cow. 
That oh book is gosh. huge. I can't that take might, it out. But that might weigh more than you. Yikes. Wow. Hand of the hand of God. So cinema on the back. It says cinema that is celebrated monument monument uh, that have saved the set. I can't. It's it like gold foil lettering, so it's really hard to read. Uh, saves the sad sad lives of people like Fabietto, uh, deluding both those who make it and those who watch it to recover the world they've lost. But delusions fill up our lives, which is why cinema will never die. That is a quote from the director of the film. I'm going to go ahead and open it just to see what it is. While you inside. open that, I got another little box here. Um, so Voyage at City. It's French. That is why I have a hard enough time reading Go ahead English. and show them the letters at least. Oh, so we've got... Here, let's see if I can actually get... How's your face? <laughs> oh, it doesn't help because that face is now being shown. But you I can... Uh, close, babe. Okay, fine. I'll pull it back a little bit. And it's also very You're shiny. You're showing your face. That's why it's... It's very, it's very shiny. <laughs> it keeps on... Okay, fine. Here. There. I'll go like that. And hold it just up in there. But you still can't see it. Right. So the it's also because of the lights. But you can also... Thanks, this thing is heavy. Oh, wow. Is that Ooh, a candle? It's a candle. Check this out. As watch, I'll probably drop it and break it. This don't. thing is ginormous. Whoa, that is the biggest candle I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever, yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten a candle this big. Holy crap. Check that out. Well, this thing can, this can be <laughs> That a is weapon. a bludgeoning weapon. This is, if, if somebody comes to your house, oh, that you, don't, you throw it at them. It smells delicious. Um, Voyage at Sea. Uh, Ricordi di Napoli, The Hand of God. Um, thank you so much for this amazing three-week candle. I'm definitely going to be lighting this up in this room. Wow. And then for the book, they usually do this in like an FYC, uh, like a picture book, making of the movie and a little bit deeper dive into the character, stills from the film and things like that. So when you are, you know, taking the film into, considera into consideration, you, whether or not you are going, you know, for voting season and whatnot, um, it really, wow, it's just gorgeous. And then there's interviews wow. in here. Yeah. There is quotes from the film. Lots there and is lots of big pictures. Lots and lots. Sorry, this isn't your face. No, it's okay. I was kind of hiding oh, my face. There you go. All right. You got it? Yeah, I think so. Let me just put it on one place. So that's a movie that I have yet to watch that I will be watching this weekend. Okay, let me try this one. All right, this one's also from Netflix. I pre I pre-opened the um the tape so it was gonna be easier to take off. out. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. All right. So we've got this, and we go. This is oh, the Lost Daughter, a film by Maggie Gyllenhaal. I know I've heard about this. I haven't had the chance to watch it yet. And what came along with it was the book that it's based on, The Lost Daughter, uh, a novel by uh, Elena uh, Ferrante. Ferrante. Hopefully, I'm saying the names correctly. I love it when they send books because I love having like the source material, the source inspiration, and whatnot. And we have, of course, the DVD. Right here, along with a little poster. Nice. Oh, okay. Her body language, posture, and facial expression delivers worlds of emotions and masterwork in perception and all that society places upon mothers and motherhood. So, a movie that I'm gonna boohoo. <laughs> essentially, is what. Well, you're and telling. that's what we're probably gonna be getting a lot of too. Maggie Gyllenhaal during um, what is it called award season? You really get exposed to a lot of movies that you're just like, I never heard of this one be yet or before. And then you just find out that it's just an intense, just emotional ride just because yeah. they dive into, you know, the art of being human, so to speak. Something Absolutely. that we can all connect to, something that we all can have kind of that, um, like that connection to. I was trying to think of another word, but couldn't. Yeah. And it came with this card. came with this note. Ooh. Okay, here's what Maggie Gyllenhaal says. When I read the novel, The Lost Daughter, something came through to me that was very strange and painful, but also undeniably true. Some secret piece of my experience as a mother, as a lover, as a woman in the world was being spoken out loud for the first time. Yeah, I'm going to cry in this. <laughs> uh, and I thought, how exciting and dangerous to create an experience like that. Not quiet along with the book, but in a room full of living, feeling people. What would it be? What would it what would it feel like to sit next to your own mother or husband or daughter or wife 
as common feelings and experiences that have been kept hidden or exposed. Of course, there's a terror and a danger in relating to someone struggling through things that we've been told are shameful or ugly, but when those experiences are put up on screen, there's also the opportunity to be comforted. If someone else has these thoughts and feelings, maybe I'm not alone. This is a part of our experience that is only articulated rarely and most through um, aberration, disjuncture, or dreaming. I'm like, like thinking about what, what this film's going to do to me already. I don't even know which film I'm going to watch first out of those two. Okay. And of course, it came with a bottle of wine. So you can cry into your wine glass. <laughs> Let's go. And you're like, oh my God, I need another glass. From Go Pablo. Thank you so much. This is Sauvignon Blanc. Thank you. Thank you. It's like a, it's murkier. Yeah, I have to it's admit, there's also made like. Made with organic grapes. Oh. Skin fermented. Oh, so that's what the little oh. chunks are in there. It's like the skin of the grapes. I don't typically drink wine, but I am very curious, and I would like to pop this open and not drink hey. on air. But <laughs> we don't we don't do that. But um, I definitely want to try it out. And then finally, this is I the last say box, guys. The best one for last. So this show is actually already out on um, Hulu, <laughs> but it's Marvel's Hit Monkey, and you you you're seeing the picture, you're seeing the name. Um, so it very much is uh, kind of like in the title so the show indicates that like the, the vengeance hit monkey this is a uh uh so you you're following a assassin monkey and the ghost of a hitman yes is, is essentially the the premise of it without giving too much away this premiered on hulu just about two days ago it's animation it's on hulu um so you know it's gonna get a little little adult um in in the in the violence i think but this is very 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 exciting well especially if you guys have seen any of the trailers for this it is very bloody it is very graphic and it looks like it's going to be i think it's called hit monkey <laughs> hit monkey yeah and it's pretty much you know this monkey's seeking revenge yeah so i find it how i mean that's the thing. Nowadays, as us as comic book fans, nothing is off the table. If you wanted to tell a story about uh, the ghost of a hitman pairing up with an assassin monkey, you can do it nowadays. Yep. You can tell these incredibly off the wall, incredibly bizarre stories, and you now have a platform yes. for it, especially if it holds the name Marvel or DC on it. So before we get into this box, I want to go back to the comments real quick. We have uh, Manu Manuel, sorry if I'm saying your name, Elvis, so it says, I love Elena Ferrante. I've read most of her books. My favorite is Troubling Love. And then MK dropping uh, some of the release dates for the films that we just did the unboxing for. So Netflix release dates for The Hand of God is December 15th and the lost daughter is december 31st so there you have it and i love what blade gtr says a ghost and an assassin monkey a tale as old as time <laughs> isn't that true <laughs> mk also says this sorry let me put up uh just blades real quick there you go and then we have mk who says watch the first episode of hit monkey enjoyed it and gotta find time to go back and finish the season adding bone added bonus the ghost of the hitman is voiced by jason sudeik 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 can't Sudeikis. even speak to <laughs> jason sudeikis i know and you can get i love just some of the voice talent that we get yeah. in the show these days yeah. it's amazing rooting for killers by now but i think it's to find out why his tribe was killed wasn't yeah, it yeah it was like because like a revenge like thing. the monkeys not try what would you call it it, would, it wouldn't be his tribe it would be like, like his his, his it would be his family technically yeah well, I was his calling entire it, group like, of, yeah his entire group of monkeys whatever you call a family of monkeys all right let's open up this box and see what we've got more of the crinkly papers. <laughs> so More of the red crinkly papers. Revenge goes primal, says on the bottom of the box. Oh. Marvel's hit monkey. All right, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to hold it sideways. Yeah, it's a little bit easier. Oh, we oh got snacks, y'all. Oh, I like snacks. We got snacks. snacks. All right, we got first. Ooh. What is that? Diff eyewear, charitable eyewear. It's oh, sunglasses. Because, because the, the monkey, monkey wears his, sunglasses. Has sunglasses. <gasps> guys, I love shades. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. <laughs> right out of the box. <laughs> Sorry, Whoops. Netflix and Hit Monkey. I'm sure it's fine. Well, fortunately, wow, it's in the it's case. Like, and it's super padded. Oh, these those are some really nice sunglasses. And it says Hulu on it and Hit Monkey. Nice. On the back here. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me hide my face. Oh, sorry. Uh, hide my face. Focus, focus. There we go. Oh, no. It doesn't want to focus. 
Okay, we're not having any luck with it focusing today. Our camera, maybe the autofocus I think, the autofocus I, think is off. I think the lighting is is a little funky today. Okay, but I wanna. So do you get the do you get the sunglasses or naturally. do I get the? Oh. <laughs> Unless um, I you look. have so many sunglasses. <laughs> I wear them all. Well, Wendy, oh, those are mirrored sunglasses. I feel like I'm the You can now see I'm what, an our set, what our setup looks like through the eyes of Wendy. These are cool. They're Wendy's, comfy. Oh, yeah. Ooh. All right, hold on. Chat, we get to decide who looks cooler with these sunglasses on, Wendy or me. And I hope it says me because then I get to keep them. <laughs> Because I actually need some sunglasses. You can't, you well, can't do that. Thing, you, you're I also to, you're break sunglasses. Them. I break sunglasses. You know how expensive a lot these easier. are. We're not gonna break those. I go through sunglasses so fast, but dip, these dip, are hefty dip, dip too. Is not cheap. I have to admit, these are actually nice and hefty and thick. I love so these. So I think they look really good. Uh, so Dean says Wendy. <laughs> So Jim says, sorry, Jim says Wendy, no comment. Dean says Dustin, no comment. Oh, okay, so we'll have to share them. Staying, staying, staying neutral. Pull the husband <laughs> card. And we've also got a ton of snacks in here. All right, let's go to the snacks. I'm sorry. I'll put Ooh, the glasses away. We got some Pocky, but we've got, what are these? These are, oh, it's all in Japanese. I can't read what kind. Okay, it looks on. like it's milk honey. Yogurt, there. chocolate, and wheat. Chocolate. I, I think the, the sticks are wheat. Oh, are so wheat. it's a wheat honey milk kind of a thing. That's what because it looks like honey and milk that's in there, or it's like a chocolate milk. cream cover biscuit sticks. I think the, the sticks are wheat. Oh and the and the uh what do you call it? And the it's covered in chocolate. Ooh, some of Wendy's favorite. The oh the hello, hello pandas. pandas. I actually have some in the house, but I'm happy to add more to it. I love hello panda. <laughs> oh. Ooh, oh, these look really good. Ooh, these are Soft. from um, Kasugai, and they are uh, mango gummy candies. Man, Hulu, come through with uh, <laughs> with with your gift boxes. I mean, this is all the snacks that we get a little ASMR. These are all the snacks that we're gonna have when we watch Netflix. Not from Netflix. I'm sorry, Hulu's Hit Monkey. This Hit is Mon awesome. Wow. Oh, and then there's Fruit, wow, fruity and soft. And then we have these. Um, oh, the rice candies. These are cool. Nice. And yeah, we, we got some lots Kit Kats. of munchies to eat. These are all the Rager in Japan. Japan has super different ones. These, I don't know what flavor this is, but it says like in the front here. I know I can read this first letter, which means like frozen. <laughs> so I think you might want to freeze it before so it's like you eat it. like a mint kind of a thing. And then this one's cheesecake flavored. Cheesecake. And then and these, that's it? the mushrooms with the chocolate on top, these are delicious. Whenever I went into a convenience store or any Asian Mart, I see these, I buy them. So these are all the snackies from Marvel's Hit Monkey. Thank you so much, Hulu, for sending all of these over. We can't start to watch just everything dropped around the same time yeah like, oh my god! because gosh. i think they're trying to get everything out for like the holiday season because thanksgiving's next week so you get family together and people are going to be at home off work so they can be watching um you know the shows and stuff like that so we got all the snacks we already i'm curious about this this rice candy yeah that looks kind of interesting I mean, there's not really no like picture on the front of what it actually looks like. So all the other candies and snacks actually have like um, it, you you know what this one looks like. I think like. it's just you know like maybe a hard candy. Like. So it's corn syrup, sugar, water, uh, gluttonous rice uh, flour. Oh, so maybe it's chewy. Uh, wafer, paper, potato mm. starch, sweet potato starch, uh, rapeseed oil, soy. Uh, yep. So interesting. Oh wow! Are they good? Yeah. Ooh, I'm one. I'm a huge fan of mango. Eat, love, eat into the microphone. <laughs> oh, I love mango flavored stuff. Look at the and, jelly. And oh, they are gummy. These are really good. They are really nice, soft jellies. Um, and mm, okay. the flavor really, really pops. That mango flavor is just mm -hmm. really good. If you guys get a chance to buy some of these. These are really good. Love. I just found out you that these glasses go... are polarized. Oh. I love polarized sunglasses. You probably have to go to like a whole, um, what is that, a world market to get these. You could probably go to oh. H Mart or H -Mart, Daiso, Daiso or one of the 99, 99 Ranch probably has them. Yeah, true. But thank you very much, Hulu, for sending us this incredible Fresh. snack pack. 
and sunglasses for Hit Monkey. Um, they will be put to good use. Yeah, we're gonna definitely. I might do a separate Insta just to show what I've got inside. So we're gonna Navi do not eat these. <laughs> Fortunately, Navi's really good about that, huh, Navi? And every time we start the show, you're always right here going, Daddy, Daddy, pick me up. I want to be on the show. No. No, come here. No. So, um, but yeah, now we're going to be diving in to some of our main topics that we have for our show today. Um, what are we starting off with? Do you know? Ah, the production, the mysterious production. Now, well, it's, that do we we don't know what it is yet. Well, though, she's right? producing a secret Marvel Marvel project, so it essentially doesn't tell us anything other than she's working on a secret Marvel project. But we do know it is not. Um, related to any sort of Black Widow. That's what in the article is said. Um, this is not one of the, this is not the only thing she's producing for Disney. She's also producing um, the Tower of Terror movie. Oh, yeah. And that right. I believe Taika Waititi has signed on to direct. So that's really exciting. But this is on the Marvel side. So um, I think Kevin and Feige really enjoyed working with her, you know, throughout the ent her entire career. Um, as Black Widow, so it's very exciting to see her now kind of shifting to more of the behind the scenes stuff. She's going to be producing. I'm very curious to see what project she might be producing because it's Marvel, but it's not Black Widow related. So, you know, people are speculating like the Yelena stuff, which is kind of too closely That's still related. Too close to Black yeah. Widow. I think it would be separate from that. But this also really shows something really nice and good is the fact that even though Scarlett Johansson went through that lawsuit with Disney, mm -hmm. they obviously settled it. Mm -hmm. They obviously put all their differences aside and they're still working together. So that means there's no like hard feelings. There's no bruised egos. No one's holding like this against one another. And they're able to move on and have a happy, productive relationship of working together. Yeah. So I am really happy to see Scarlett Johansson doing more work directly with Marvel. Absolutely. And Debbie here says in this comment, I'm guessing the Marvel project is going to be a force. The rumored all female Avengers project. I'd love to see her. That would work. That would be yeah. really cool. Yeah. Having a hand in that. I think that'd be really cool. And again, she's kind of like one of the, 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 she is the first female Avenger that was introduced into the current MCU. Yeah. Uh, and, then that, and then after that, we got, you know, then the Wasp and Captain Marvel and um, 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 rescue and, I'm missing some people. Oh, Elena Valkyrie? And, and yeah, Valkyrie and Wanda and everybody else. I started to go through like that one moment in Endgame when Captain Marvel is like, hey there, Peter Parker, and yeah, takes, hey there, the, Peter and takes Parker. the gauntlet. And takes the, gauntlet. the way she says it, it just seems so, she's like so cool the way she's like, mm -hmm. hey, Peter Parker. Like, oh. Hey, Captain Marvel. Can I, <laughs> like, you, can I call you Carol? Carol? <laughs> Coral? <laughs> so I'm. that's actually a really good guess on probably what it is. And it would make a lot of that. sense yeah. that they would bring Scarlett Johansson to be a part of this project because, unfortunately, you know, Black Widow can't be a part of, the t of that A-Force team. Nope. Unless they do something with the Soul Stone and bring both her and Gamora back. Which I don't think is going to happen. No, because it, it takes away Black Widow's moment. Yeah. The the, the ultimate sacrifice mm -hmm. that she knew that and, and having, you know, Clint go through that whole thing. Like, she was like, let me do this. You've got a family. I don't really... Even though she lied about that, she technically did discover yeah, her family. Yeah, no, and right before that as well. Yeah, and she ended up, you know, still was like, just let me do this. So, oh, I want to cry and thinking about it. Okay, so there is that. And then the, our next bit of news is... Uh, I'm going to mix fix up my spelling here because I was... Oh, no, I did it right. Okay. Woohoo! We've got some casting news for Blade... Uh, if you guys don't know Delroy Lindo, you probably have seen him most recently in The Harder They Fall, but he's also in The Five Blood, which is a movie that us and I both absolutely loved and couldn't shut up about. And if you're a fan of Chadwick Boseman, you probably already know about this film. But if you don't, he is in it, and you can see his performance in that as well. But he has joined the cast of Blade. People are speculating. They, there's been no um, confirmation or leaks or whatever about what character he's going to play, but they are thinking he's going to play 
a version of Whistler. So Which kind I of the mentor to Blade. A perfect fit for oh, him. Oh, yeah. He is an amazing actor in all of the parts that he's done. Oh, no. Um, Did we lose? No, that Chris? was it's that okay. was just me. Honestly. We're still here now. We're a podcast. It's okay. Yep. <laughs> We're going to be a podcast now for just the next couple of minutes while we fix the video. But honestly, I think... Um, he is an amazing actor. And anytime that you add good talent to a production is always good news for that production. We've always been super excited to when we first heard that um, Blade was coming out. We got even more excited when, um, uh, uh, sorry, name of Blade, actor. Mahershala. Mahershala, thank you. Names. Um, when we found out that Mahershala Ali was going to be in it, we got super excited when we found out that it was Mahershala Ali's voice in the Eternals at the end credit scene. I am super excited just to see more and that more. That voice, man. Oh. oh, I know. And I know. Everyone was like, oh, it's the Watcher. Just Not everyone, just the people intensity. that were sitting around us. We yeah. want to be specific. It wasn't that everybody was saying that, but a lot of people who were sitting around us like, that's the Watcher. I'm like, I don't know. It's quite <laughs> got the same volume of like gravitas that jeffrey wright puts in the watcher but once we found out and chloe Zhao herself confirmed that it was blade i was like yes that tracks that sounds like him so very excited looking forward to this i'm also excited to see mahershala ali and um do um lindo um work, do, Delroy lindo work together uh -huh. because i mean these two are just incredible actors and especially if you have one um playing like the mentor to the other I think that is a really good role for um, Lindo to be playing. Absolutely, I think uh, this is this is a great addition to the cast. We don't really know exactly who else is doing the cast of Blade, but that's a that's a little bit away. Having Blade uh, appear in, uh, in the end <laughs> credit of Eternals because you don't really see him, so he just kind of went in the studio and was like, "Yeah, let me say my line," and then hey, he and then he's done. He might not have even gone into the studio. He could have just done it at home, yeah. recorded it, and sent in the audio and be like, hey, here's what you need because I don't need to be on set. So totally why true. even risk me being on set or in the studio at any time? Yeah, absolutely true. So very exciting for this. Uh, I've, I've wanted to see more of him since the five blood and I felt like he got gypped out of the uh, award season for that film. Um, and so now that he's in the MCU, they better do that character well like mm -hmm. like i don't want him to be like i don't want if he is let's just for, hypothetically say that he is like a whistler type character i don't want like whistler to be in one movie and then we don't see him again like i would like for him to be there for a couple of films you know bef before they they do anything like that mm -hmm. so yeah and this is just a great time to be a comic book fan because we know that fantastic four is still gonna we, i mean they're still um, what they're going to be doing like with Fantastic Four, what they're going to be doing with X-Men, how are they going to introduce them, the fact that we're going to inter be introducing the entire world of Blade and vampires. Yeah. So I am just so excited for the future of Marvel and what they're developing. And even if they do throw in some movies that don't do quite well, because I know, for example, Eternals isn't as well um isn't being as well received as some other marvel movies which one eternals oh right well it's, audience are loving it yeah audience are loving it critics are kind of eh about mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. we're somewhere in the middle we're somewhere in the middle um but i still think that even if marvel does every now and again kind of put out something that doesn't go um kind of hold up to the marvel standard that we've all come to come in love this storyline and this world and universe still has so much speed and momentum that they're going to be going for years to come. And I'm just excited to, for them to keep on that momentum forward and to keep on seeing all of the new stuff that they have not, that we have not gotten to see yet. Yeah, like, I'm not loving the Rotten Tomato score for uh, Eternals. It's a 47%, which it is really I, I get well split, it. I, I get it. It's fine. Like it's that, that's your, your, your opinion. You're obviously definitely entitled to how, you feel after you see a movie. I just think 47 is a bit harsh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, I was the like, it's not that. Is huge. Yes, because the audience scores 80%. 47, 80. That is a big split for yeah. a movie. Yeah. I mean, for one to have it be technically rotten on their scale and the other one be certified fresh on their scale. <laughs> it is. I a, rated it fresh. Yeah, we both rated it. Yeah, yeah, we both rated it fresh. And we think 
that it's definitely a good addition to the Marvel Cinematic I just think universe. it was a really hard task because you're introducing characters to the general audience who's never even known about the Eternals. Comic book fans, no problem. Right, they've been probably been reading about the Eternals for a long time. Yes, so they've been so, and, and the Celestials and the Cosmics. So they like have known about this, but for the general audience, like I hope they were still able to enjoy the characters and the visuals and um, Chloe Zhao's vision and all the stories that they were able to tell. Uh, okay, so before we kind of move on to um, our next bit of news, which is we're crossing out into the galaxy, into the Star Wars universe. So I wanted to um, t touch on this really quickly because this is all just. Rumor, nothing's confirmed by Disney or Marvel, just putting that out there. But it's I was watching fun to talk about rumor. Yeah, I was doing my makeup before the show and I was watching a video by um Cosmic Warren, Cosmic Wonder, and he was talking about how Daredevil may not appear in just like one Marvel project, that he might be appearing in four. Uh, and I forgot the source that he he named. It wasn't one of the big trades, um, but I can't, I can't remember right now. But um, we all know that there's speculation that like he's going to have a little bit of a cameo. But he, Mac Murdock, not 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 um, not Daredevil, not Daredevil himself, right? But yeah, Matt. Just for like that Marvel. very quick, like you know, seeing in Spider-Man No Way Home, we think again, not confirmed, or this is all speculation. We don't know for sure, um, and we treat everything as rumor until Disney and or, and or Marvel says otherwise. Um, but there um, is talks that maybe he might appear also in She-Hulk because she's also based in New York. She's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. But I think most importantly, because of the upcoming show Echo. That and and they've also you know kind of hinted that Vincent D'Onofrio is going to come back to reprise his role as Kingpin, so it makes sense. Is that confirmed? I think that it's just the fact that Vincent D'Onofrio um, actually uh, put something out on his Twitter. He tweeted. Right? He, he tweeted, tweeted about Hawkeye because Echo is technically in. She's she's going to have a cameo in Hawkeye or an appearance, something like that. I don't I don't want to give anything away, but I think it's already been talked about like in the trades. Yeah. Um, people are talking about like, uh, and stuff like that. And if you know the storyline of Echo, you know how that's tied to Kingpin, which is then tied also to Daredevil. So um, I'm just happy if all of this is true and we are <laughs> going to get Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio back as their respective characters from Daredevil. That makes me so happy because damn it, I love those Marvel and Netflix shows. I loved- Oh love, yeah. Didn't love Iron Fist. The rest <laughs> of them I loved. And the Defenders was a little- I watched Defenders because I wanted, I tried so hard, I wanted to like it. I didn't even, we even watched season two of Iron Fist. Yeah. A little bit. Season two was better. It was than actually it was actually better, yeah. But um, nonetheless, I miss these characters, and it makes me wonder if they're gonna be bring back Charlie Cox's Daredevil. Can they eventually bring back John Bernthal's Punisher and mm -hmm. Jessica Jones and, and Luke, Luke Cage. Cage? Like that would make me so happy because I love those shows. They were so, so good. much. They were so good. So. One baby step, that's fine. If it's all confirmed later on by Marvel, I'm going to be so, so happy. So anyways, that's that's what I just uh, wanted to say. Late to the party says, Defenders was lame. <laughs> they don't pull any what punches. What I did like, what I did like was the ladies of the show. Yeah. You know, I watched it for Colleen, for sure. <laughs> Start doing... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Defenders is worse than Iron Fist stuff. I don't know. Joe Tapia I, says, I, I, I need me some Jessica Jones too. Heck oh, yeah. Oh, Jessica Jones. All all of the episode, all of the seasons of Jessica Jones were amazing. I love them all. And I'm so excited to see more. Yes. Because yeah, as soon as they bring in Charlie Cox for Daredevil, that opens the door for everyone else. He's now, in the MCU the now. Um, I'm wondering if if they bring back Charlie Cox, if they bring back all of the other actors, um, do you think that they would recast um, 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 uh, Iron Fist and try to bring in someone new because he wasn't as well received as the other actors? So I heard again. This is this was a rumor. This was somebody speculating on I think on Twitter. So like you can't really put any sort of like there's no facts behind this. Something about I heard that they might be going a different direction with Iron Fist. Oh, that makes That's sense That's what I heard. Too. I don't know what exactly that means, but but I did hear uh, comments or read comments like that. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means like, you know, they restructure the writing and they start, I don't, I don't know what it is. So, well, and that's actually the good thing about um, kind of acquiring these properties, mm -hmm. like say Netflix did it, and now they're going to be moving into the Disney universe. Disney can't, Iron <laughs> 
<laughs> Chris Pratt is just going to be playing everybody. Well, if Chris Pratt plays everybody. Soon it's just going to be Chris Pratt on a green screen with talking Chris with Pratt. different characters that Chris Pratt is playing. Kind of like Eddie Murphy in uh, The Nutty Professor. <laughs> yeah. So, But, I mean, that's what's great about what when Disney acquires these things. They can be like, okay, you know what? We're going to keep what everyone liked, but we're going to start to tweak everything that wasn't as well received. So I think being able to switch out the different actor for mm -hmm. Iron Fist, maybe twist his story around, maybe retell his story a little bit, I think would be perfect. I would be perfectly fine with that. And I don't think the normal um, Disney Plus or TV watching audience is going to be like, well, wait a second. What happened to the other Iron Fist? The other Iron Fist? Yeah. Um, because we're, I'm willing to accept changes on certain things here and there. Yeah. And Blade here says, you can tell Jessica Henwick put in the work when it came to the fight choreography and weapons training. And I remember one of you guys dropping uh, in our Discord a video of the the stunt choreographer or the stunt coordinator or the fight choreographer talking about working um, on, uh, on Iron Fist. And he did mention that Jessica Henwick, the reason why she looked excellent uh, is because she, she put in all the work. She went and look, being an actor, it's not the glitz and glamour. That's literally like one to two nights when they're premiering, when they get to go on like interviews and stuff like that. That's after you've put in the, the hard of work of sweat, tears, bruises, sleepless nights because you want to. Waking you know, up super sore. Yeah, waking up super sore. You got to learn your lines. And what if they change everything because there's rewrites because it happens. Especially uh, on when set. it comes to fight choreography. Yeah. Because you'll choreograph something one way and then you get on set and then you're like, oh, nuts. This is not going to work. We have to twist this around in order to get this shot here, to get this set up like that. Fight choreography is very much a fluid art form. You really have to be able to like, okay, here's the basic idea. And then when we get on set, we have to be able to adapt it to what we're able to get at the moment, what the set is like, and what we're able to um, get our actors to do mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Yeah. But, and you know, it's the same thing that you hear from so many different movie sets, you know, like the reason why John Wick was so good mm -hmm. is because Keanu Reeves showed up early. He was like the first one to arrive and the last one to leave. Of course he and is. he's <laughs> and he practiced for months and he did things that they were like, you don't have to do this. Like he did all of that extra gun training but to he, make it look like he was. Good. Yeah, but yeah. he went above and beyond kind of a thing in order to do that. And it's the dedication of the actor really does show a lot when you have these martial arts, fight heavy, action scene heavy kind of things. I mean, especially when we watched the assembled, um, the making of Shang-Chi. Oh man. When you saw how much he did, but then um, that he seemingly was just very much like, I tried to do as much as I could, but <laughs> there's some stuff that they don't let you do. Well, that's, that and, that's too dangerous for the actor. That and he's like, I can't do that. There's right. you don't want me to do that because it wouldn't look good. These guys are professionals and that's what they make the big that's what they make the money for. Yeah. Is yeah. to come in and, you know, make this action scene look amazing. And their faces aren't even in it. Because yeah. <laughs> their faces get painted out and Simu Lu's face get painted in. Yep. So yeah, this the making of uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is on Disney Plus. If you guys want to check it out, it's about an hour. It's an excellent watch. I could have watched two hours of that because I wanted more of scenes with like Tony Leung and Michael uh, and, and, and Michelle Yeoh. I definitely wanted to see more of them. And I love that that um Simu Lu's parents would call him like after a certain day on set. And mm -hmm. the first question wasn't, oh, how was it for you? Or how did you, how are you doing? Was, um, so did you get to shoot with Tony Young? Um, oh, with, did with you get Tony Young, yeah. Tony Young. And I'm like, thanks mom, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm good. My parents would, that would be the same though. Cause you're, these are actors that we watch growing up, like on cinema, like they are the superstars of, of the movie and TV world. So that's, you know, you talk about the standard, like that's, that's it. Yep. And it's funny because, you know, you hear Simi Lu, obviously he's, the, he's the title hero. So he had the most scenes and the most stunt work and stuff like that. But I would say with uh, Tony Leung, like his scenes, the bamboo forest scene was beautiful and it was not easy. And I think in one of the interviews, I don't think it was in the making up and some other interviews, he goes, yeah, I trained for about two weeks. And I'm like, Two weeks. Sure, he trained about two. He's well, of course, one of the he's guys, always trained kind of a thing. But he's, I think, also gotten to the point of, you know, 
he's so trained in both acting and in physical stunts that he can learn something on set and make it look excellent in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's that experience. And same thing for Michelle Yeoh. She's been doing stuff like way back when with Jackie Chan, super cop. Yep, yep. So in any case, let's go ahead and get into our next topic. Sorry to go off on a super long tangent. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Let's talk about um, they've now cast Sabine. And I actually pulled up a photo. This is for the live action Ahsoka series. And we were wondering, Sabine's got to be in this, right? They threw out Thrawn at the very end of Rebel. We see Sabine and um, uh, Ahsoka kind of like meeting up and flying off together probably uh, hot on the trails of Thrawn and Ezra. We've heard rumors that um, Ezra, or not we, but just like collectively as, inter as the internet, yeah. have heard that, uh, speculated also, that Ezra is probably going to be in this. The casting, maybe potentially could be going to Mina Masood, who played Aladdin in Disney's Aladdin, but we don't know because that's not confirmed. But what is confirmed is this lovely actress right here, Natasha Lou Bordis. Bordizo, who has been cast as Sabine. I'm very excited that um I'm I'm a little let down that it's not Taya Sakara because um or yeah. Sakar because she is the voice actor for Sabine. And I thought maybe there was a chance that they would put her in because they put Katie Sackoff in as Bo Katan. But uh I think seeing the picture I don't know much of Natasha Liu's work, so I'm really just going off of base of like some of the photos I found of her. Yeah. But I think she's going to look great as Sabine. And then the age is about right too. Cause I think Debbie said it, um, that Sabine would be about 30 in the events of Ahsoka. Um, and, uh, so the parent and the, the actress age, right? is about 26 or 27. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and they can go a little younger, a little older. So I'm very excited because Sabine, I loved, I, I mean, I loved all the characters from Rebels, but oh, Sabine, yeah. putting her in, it's going to make it interesting of how that whole, like the Disney Plus show with the Mandalorian, everything is going to come into play because she is a Mandalorian and she once held the, the, the dark saber. Yeah, she was, she got the dark saber. She was technically at one time the rightful ruler of Mandalore. Yeah. So but she gave it up. Yeah, so she gave it up, and I don't see her. There's conflict between her and like Bo Katan at this point because she did, you know, willingly give it up. But well, Bo Katan had it. She gave it to Bo, and then she lost it. But now, so now in season two, three of the Mandalorian, or maybe even in Boba Fett, ah, I don't think I don't they're, they're going to. No, 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 well, no, they no. might. You know, they I might think this... see her. But I don't think they're going to deal with the dark saber stuff until season three of the Mandalorian. Yeah. and I love the fact that Boba Fett kept on calling her princess. I mean, and you just saw the, the I hate you. <laughs> I'm going to beat you I'm up gonna right now. I'm going to kill you, Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Blade says she looks about right for Ahsoka to take place right where Rebel ends. I need at one point Ahsoka to have the staff in the white cloak. Yes. I just I just need that at one point where they're, they're just, there doesn't need to be explanation. I just need it to be a shot. Just to mm -hmm. acknowledge that I'm going to freak out. Yeah. So. Very, very, very exciting. All right. Let's see. Should we move on to the next uh, topic there? Yes. All right. Most definitely, because oh, to move on to some of the exciting things and announcements that they did at D23 this year. Oh, man. So, again, kind of glad that we didn't wake up at 5 because MK, I believe, dropped the Saturday and Sunday links to the live like live stream of D23 um, in our Discord. So thank you so much for that. I really thought it was going to be basing up what I saw in 2019, which was a whole equivalent to a Hall H. Yeah. It was huge. It was grand. They did things for theme parks, for upcoming Disney Plus stuff, because they were launching Disney Plus uh, in 2019, November of 2019 as well. So um, D23 definitely was kind of like a vehicle for you know, huge push for Disney plus. And I'm glad for it because we got like live performance from the actors, uh, from, from high school musical, the musical, the series, and <laughs> no idea. I was going to love the show so much. Like I'm invested when the show came back and I would be vis uh, doing like really late night, uh, edits for whether it was the Mandalorian or whatever, I would pop on the high school musical, the musical, the series, and just have it while I'm waiting for things to export blocked and re-edited because that was the pattern um but this time we got um a couple of bits of news Ooh, going all the way to the beginning i gotta plug in my laptop here oh is it almost dead yeah i think Where is the charge in the it's room? out it's out there oh my gosh, out there. oh god 
Yeah, our entire set, like if it flipped around, it's a disaster zone right now. I can't, the Virgo in me wants to straighten everything up right now immediately. I can't take it, but I am, I'm also definitely not, not like, I don't want to share these with Dustin because this huh? is, I don't want to share these with you because they're, they, they look cool. You have, you have an entire drawer <laughs> full of, of sunglasses. <laughs> I have one pair. <laughs> these look so good. They look good on both of us. Uh, okay. Uh, but they made so many announcements about the parks, about some of the cool things that are coming out. Um, we lost our video again. Oh, no. Um, it really? was probably me bumping into it. Is this the... Yep, I probably just messed that up. However, um, one of the cool things was like some of the Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du, I can never say it right. I've tried for years on trying to say it correctly, and it just never comes out right. It looks really cool what they're doing for that, some of the things that they're doing at the parks. But one of the big things that they did talk about was the new uh, Magic Band. Well, um, yeah, the Magic Band Plus, and finally Disneyland will finally be able to have um, our own Magic Band, which has been like rumored like oh it's coming it's coming i'm coming i'm like you know i'm just it's fine that can be an east coast thing they can have that we'll just stick with our paper you know like fast pass which is uh, now all done away because we have this stupid genie plus thing that i don't want to buy into but the magic band plus um now they're um going to have like a hey disney feature as well and they're putting that in the hotel rooms too which is kind of crazy so it's similar to like a hey amazon i don't want to say the a name but the <laughs> but the smart device that pairs with your amazon stuff or with your apples or or with your galaxy your samsons and things like that or with your your whatever else there is you can say hey disney and who knows what it'll do hey disney tell me the weather maybe I think it hey like, disney tell me the, the wait time for this that's ride that's the big thing hey disney can you place an order at the um blue bayou that is the most important thing just mobile order by speech oh my gosh i mean and honestly that is one of the biggest things that i love one of the newest updates not newest but one of um, a new update that they did at Disneyland was mobile ordering. If you if you go to a Disneyland theme park and you do not utilize mobile ordering, you are losing out on time. Yeah, it is so convenient. Use mobile ordering. Highly recommended. Yes, absolutely. Um, so just reading a little bit of the notes that I have down for the Disney band. So the next generation Disney band plus wearable technology and Hey Disney voice assistant recently announced for Walt Disney world resort will be coming to Disneyland resort in 2022. This will mark the first time Disney band plus will be available at Disneyland resort to enhance the guest experience with hands-free convenience as it unlocks unique moments of magic for Disneyland resort guests. Some of the features of the Magic Band Plus will vary between Disneyland Resort and Dis Walt well, Disney World Resort, and we'll share details, we, them, not us, uh, share the details in months ahead. The Hey Disney voice assistant will work alongside Amazon <laughs> devices. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to say it, so it doesn't Amazon act good. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and also start rolling out to guest rooms across the hotels of Disneyland Resort. So that's very, very interesting. It's kind of, uh, in a way, because you know how we kind of joke, but also not joke about how these devices are listening to us? Yep. So it's like, are we being listened to? What if we just complain about pricing? If we, like, put enough of that into, into, into their... Into circulation, yeah, yeah. into circulation, well, they'd be like, all right, let's, like, bump this down 50 cent, make everybody happy. Uh, I don't know. Well, I think, actually, what they would need to do is to see less people purchasing it because of the price increase. Because it doesn't come down to ta people talking and complaining about it. It's all about the green kind of a thing. I suppose. Disney is getting very, very, very expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And before, I remember, it was used to be something that we could, you know, kind of just have in our back pocket and be always be able to be like, oh, yeah, I've got this. I got my Disneyland pass mm -hmm. and still have access to a lot of cool stuff and not be breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. But it's starting to become a much, much bigger um, financial burden, so to speak, to be able to have, be able to go to Disneyland whenever we want kind of a thing. But we are very fortunate as well. One, to live close enough. We're pretty close to Anaheim. We're under an hour away from Anaheim. When I lived in Florida, I would have to drive three and a half, four hours 
um, up to Disney World to Orlando if I wanted to go. So if I went, it was like for the whole weekend. Would I would stay with friends and stuff like that. I had a pass and everything. Here before when we had the annual pass, it was just like if we're not blocked out, then we're there. We can just go. Uh, now we still haven't purchased our Disney um, Magic Key. We're still waiting on it. We're hearing that reservation's been very, very hard to, to get. So that makes me not want to pay the big bucks to have a key to be a key holder, but not to be able to go to the parks. Yeah. Like that's that scares me a little bit. So we will see. But the most expensive magic key has already sold out at Disneyland. So if you were the top, on top one, the top, top tier, we weren't going to get that one anyway. No, we were not. It's very because we thought about it for like a nanosecond. It was up in discussion mm -hmm. for like a second. And then we did the calculation and we're like, we're not going to live at the park. Let's not get this. Yeah. It's it would, so expensive. Mm -hmm. We'd have, in order to make our money back, I think we'd have to go like two times a month, two which or is, three times a month, which is fine. We were doing that. We, but we weren't doing that when we had the annual pass. Yeah. Um, just based on our schedule. And I don't know if we'd be doing that now in like the pandemic. So, uh, we just decided that that wouldn't be the tier we got. Anyways, but some of the other things that they talked about, aside from um, the the Disney Park experience, let me actually go back to the the website because on Disney Park blogs they actually have like a timeline of what was announced. So you know that in California, um, California's Adventure, we have Avengers Campus. That's yes. where it lives. So Disney Paris is the next Disney Park to get Avengers Campus, and they're starting construction on it because they are going to be open next summer as a part of their 30th anniversary celebration so there will be, the uh, avengers will also assemble over there which is going to be very exciting to see um what they do with that if it's going to look mostly the same i would imagine the layout will be similar from one park to the next because i feel like that's kind of what they did with galaxy's edge that's also very much what disney does yes. kind of a thing when they have a branded ip it's going to be very similar from park to park to park mm -hmm. um they might have some small little tweaks and adjustments to make it fit within that park but if it is a, like for example i think like the ratatouille ride in epcot and in paris are exactly the same mm -hmm. um the star wars rides of uh, rise of the resistance in disneyland and disney world are both the same kind of a thing yeah so i'm excited to be a i'm, I'm excited to see that the um world um what is it the avengers campus is expanding that they have bigger plans for it, that's going to different theme parks. And I'm just also excited to go to Disneyland Paris someday. <laughs> one day. It's, it's somewhere on the, it's on the, it's in the bucket list. Yes, for sure. That's, that's the next one. Even though I very much want to go back to Tokyo Disney because we love that one. I think that's our favorite out of the three parks that we've gotten to go to. And a new uh, themed port called uh, Fantasy Spring is coming to Tokyo Disney Sea uh, with uh, an exciting aerial video footage that was shown during the D23 uh, live stream. Shows how expansive it's going to be when it's finally completed, and it will be the park's eighth and largest port when it opens in about two years from now. So that's very exciting. So in two years from now, we're going to have to go back to Tokyo <laughs> Disney Sea to see what it's Honestly, all about. if yeah, if you've got a chance, if you get to choose between so far. Um some of the Disneyland's mm -hmm. um, put Tokyo Disneyland move and it to the top of your move list. Move that to the top of your list. It is amazing. Um, it really did just. I mean, they've had more years and more space than the original Disneyland Resort yeah. to put together um, to do some stuff. But it is amazing. It is beautiful. It is so well put together. They take immersion to a whole new level. Yeah. Um, so if you get a chance, if you have like to choose between Disneyland's put Disney to uh, Tokyo Disney on yeah. that list higher up. And I know it sounds like it's a little bit more difficult because international travel and you also, um, depending on what kind of credit card you have, you might not be able to purchase Tokyo Disney uh, tickets online. Like you have to either buy it at the park or you have to buy it. Uh, uh, I think you, you can buy it online, but there are specific types of credit cards you need. So it's, it's you, if you have just like regular master visa, you can't do it because we tried that. We actually couldn't buy it until we got into Taiwan. And one of my cousins who happened to work at a travel agency was actually able to buy the tickets for us because otherwise we would have had to walk to the park early in the morning, which we did anyways, but stand in the line to purchase the tickets and then get inside the park. So that helped. Just So just a little bit of like travel tip for you guys when you're booking um, you, the, the ticket purchasing can be a little wonky. I don't know if you can maybe call them or not. Um, you would think so, but it wasn't 
we weren't able to do that. Yeah. So now um, we do have a question. Yes. From B Ray, uh, to 32, 30, uh, 23. If you had to choose Ooh. between Tokyo Disneyland, like you could only go to one park or the other, which one would you go to? I think for the, okay, for me, there are a few um, things that would decide on that. If you've been to, say, Disney World and you went to the Magic Kingdom, um, I would say go uh -huh. to Tokyo Disney Sea. There are a lot of things that are very similar from one to the other. Mm -hmm, if you've mm -hmm. never gone to any Disneyland ever before, I would say go to Tokyo Disneyland mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because there are just a lot. I mean, it's the way that it's set up. I love just the the way that it is decorated, the way that it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. It really, really is. Yeah, and it's clean. It is so Well, Japan clean. itself is clean. Yeah. Yeah, Japan as a whole is is clean, at least where, you know, the cities we visited, which is mainly Tokyo, um, was, was is very clean. But I, I think I would also pick Disney Sea because we've been to, we've been lucky enough to have gone to Disney World and Disneyland. So there's a lot of similarities in that, although their castle is absolutely oh. Stunning. Um, but Tokyo Disney Sea is incredible. And they have really cool rides. If you want to get on the Winnie the Pooh ride, though, you have to go to the Disney Disneyland because that's not at sea. But at the sea, they have the 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea ride, right? Yeah, I'm so bummed that we didn't. It was, get, it was closed. It was for closed when we, went, when we went. But the journey to the center, center of the Earth. Earth. And then there was one more ride that we were like, oh, this is so cool. Was um, it Indiana Jones? No, it was I, the same. But I mean, there were a Tower of Terror. Oh yeah, the Tower of the Terror. The Tower of Terror, because it's it's different. It's right. a different type of story from from how it is here. Incredible. If you get a chance to, um, on Disney Plus, behind the attraction of Tower of Terror, they do talk about the Tokyo Disney version mm -hmm. and some of the special effects and some of the cool things that they do on that ride are just amazing. Lots of lots of fun. I just got to read this comment right here by MK. I was scrolling through the comments a little bit. Um, MK says, was watching the live stream earlier. And when Josh Diamaro, who is the chairperson for Disney Parks and Experiences, mm -hmm. and who was doing all the announcements, he was on stage and announced that an audience winner would be winning an Amazon Echo is followed by complete silence. <laughs> They're like, Amazon... I'm no, oh, as I said that really loud. I oh, if we don't have we, should, we don't have her in here. It's oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not in this room. We um, took her honestly, out of this room. though, an Amazon Echo you can get now for like twenty bucks. I think, especially now for like, is that the little one? That's the, the yeah, that's the, the little dot. dot. Yeah. Um, it, the Amazon Show is the one with the screen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the Amazon Echo is now just you know, it's very easy to get one, I and mean, you can oh, go on to Amazon. Yeah, you can get one for like twenty that's bucks. That's awkward. And there's a lot of times. I think there's a lot of things that they've done to where if you buy this, you get an Echo for free. Kind oh of yeah. Thing. yeah so yeah complete silence you probably heard a few crickets in the background <laughs> a tumbleweed like, goes rolling but, and by. also so many people have a type of smart device in their phone you see either they have it or they don't want it right so it's one of those like if yeah. you already have it you if you want one you probably already had it and they might be listening they might be listening to you you never know who's listening behind the echo so one of the other things that we checked out during the live stream that we caught this while we we're eating our delicious Taiwanese breakfast was the panel that was um led by ashley Eckstein, the voice of ahsoka tano from clone wars and rebels and she got a sneak peek at very jealous she got a sneak peek at the um, the Galactic Star Cruiser that is opening up um, in March of 2022. It's definitely a uh, luxurious experience, to mm -hmm. put it lightly. It is not cheap. It's just below $5,000 for, for two, two people nights. for two nights. Um, so just take that into consideration. But it's not your normal hotel stay. Like if you're looking for, I'm going to go in the park, I'm going to come back to the hotel room and crash. And I want to stay in a Star Wars themed hotel. That is not it for you. You're mm -hmm. you're that's not what this is about. This is this is kind of like an RPG live action role play immersive experience into Star Wars. They're gonna so think like going on essentially a cruise ship, but you're a part of the story and you're there's activities for you to do and scheduled for you throughout the day. Imagine drama on your cruise ship, kind of a thing. And they did talk about the storyline, how 
um, the captain of the ship is actually uh, has a relationship with the um, rebellion. And there's someone from the First Order who suspects that the captain is doing something with the rebellion. He's there to interrogate some of the guests and some of the crew members. And he's going to get to the bottom of some of these peculiar consequences. Oh, um, what is that called? Uh, consequences? Not consequences, but when things happen at the same time and it's... Um, con- He's checking out some things that don't kind of pan out. Okay. And I th- and the fact that you get to choose, one, your side, two, what you want to do and how you interact with all of these characters and actors is amazing. Uh, what I'm also really curious about is that it sounds like they have a really strong structure and storyline and plot points that you can follow. And what you do on the ship affects everything on the ship like they say if they jump into hyperspace in the at the um control in the uh, in this one area the in entire the cockpit, in the cockpit or control wherever room? you in the control the bridge room, but it will do it for the entire hotel so if you are in your um quarters and someone pulls the lever to go into hyperspace all of the screens in all of the um, rooms and the whole thing makes you feel like you're going into hyperspace. I wonder how they do that. Like, what is it built on to make you feel that? Like, yeah. That level? Like, what is it? And I'm just like, that is in The whole building's a ride. <laughs> and then I'm curious on, you know, there's going to go, there's going to be people who go to this um, hotel. I, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I hesitate to call it a hotel. Let's just call it an experience. Sure. And try to, you know, break it in a sense to find out where their weak points are, to find out, oh, what happens if I go off course like this? If I do something completely unexpected, I guarantee you Disney already had a day like that. And and whatever employee got to like take, <laughs> take part and be like, oh, I can F things up. No problem. Yeah. Let me be the problematic guest for you. Within reason, you know, to where you don't. No, not like, within reason. They got to they gotta be prepared. Well, I'm saying like if you start cause like if you start like start a fight. Okay, well, in, in the bar, then the Mickey Mouse security is going to get called. <laughs> then the yeah, the Mickey Mouse the badges, Mickey badges yeah, they're going to come and get you. Um, so I can see that. Um, h- how I'm curious on how that works out. I'm really curious mm-hmm. to see the structure, the design on how the actors are trained to be like, okay, if a guest does this, this is how you deal with this, and this is go you and go in the dis- direction. Just kind of see the flow chart of what to do with guests that are trying to, um test you know poke out and try to find the weak spot of the story yeah for sure um during the panel they definitely you know explain a lot about the storytelling how it starts the second you walk you basically as it exit your car once you you know they park your car for you then you're transported you're in the story once you're in like even the check-in lobby which i think is really cool um the chairperson josh damari damaro damaro sorry um also showed off the very cool real lightsaber the one that retracts and extracts um so don't think that you're paying five thousand dollars and you get to play with this lightsaber because you will get to see it but they didn't they were careful to not use the words you will get to use it for lightsaber training i believe they will they will hand you usable lightsaber it's it's the same thing that you and i speculated we speculated that it's essentially the hero lightsaber so i think we saw oh i don't want to give away the doctor strange thing that we saw the show that we saw the doctor strange Oh, when he did the thing, I think it's a similar technology. So there's going to be the hero lightsaber that Ray or whoever is training you, um, probably Ray, will activate and it's going to look cool. And maybe there are some slight movements. I don't know, because based on the kind of I think there was like specs on how to, like, to, what kind of technology they use. Yeah, because they had to. I file don't. The I, yeah, I don't think it's fight ready, battle ready. So I think there will be a slight switch off where then Ray will get her battle ready lightsaber and then you will do you know lightsaber training with that but he also showed the lightsaber training where there's like a light beam and you have the battle ready lightsaber that you can actually swing around and he was kind of doing this to like try to deflect the blasters which is like i mean that's like every star wars fan's dream Uh, yeah who doesn't want when you get the vr in the vr you can you can do that in on oculus yeah uh in uh what is that darth vader what's that one um yeah yeah yeah. it was the darth vader one you don't remember the name um you didn't say no if you don't remember okay i was like it was on the tip i'm like i remember i'm trying to remember it but i did play it yes and it is a really fun game because you get to do everything from force grab weapons to using like force grab a a, um a trooper's um blaster and be able to use it against them force 
push a grenade that they threw at you, um, to be able to do some blaster deflecting. To it, it is yeah. a really fun game. To be, if there's like a stormtrooper on a balcony, you can ah! grab them, throw, and just like grab them with the force and throw them off. I want them to have the villain scream every single time. Wow! <laughs> uh, thank you so much to Angelid for your uh, super chat. Thank, thank you, you so, so, much. so much. Who says I like the info? Keep up good work. Good thank work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for support, that. Man. Thank you so 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 much. Uh, did you get the light highlights? The which lights highlight the lightsaber highlights? If not, if there's a video, Leo, if you can drop it in the link, I would love to know a little bit more about that. Um, but speaking of info, I did have some photos of some of the things. Um, they also have like they made sure that you know you can buy some merch. So everything in this picture that you see here, I pulled from the D23 uh, website. I think I just I just searched. <laughs> Uh, star, uh, what did I search? Galactic Star Cruiser merch. And these are what popped up. And these are some of the wearable costume pieces that you can purchase exclusively if you go, um, go and experience this. So we have on the left there, um, you have the beautiful cloak that's worn by Padme. You have some um, toilet tails that you can wear. Obviously, I, I see the child size um, Leia costume. I see the very recognizable to Bruton head tails. Mm -hmm. uh, very much looks like Ahsoka's because we know Shakti's look a little bit different because the head jewels are, are all a little bit different. Um, if I went, that was that would 100% be the one that I picked up. Um, and I also really like that gray uh, Jedi cloak that's on the right there, right next to the Padme thing. I think it looks a little bit different than yes. your traditional Jedi robe or Jedi uh, tunic, and it looks cool. And then the green cloak coat thing on the on the right. I don't know how expensive these are going to be. I'm guessing upwards to, I don't know. Ashley was wearing the Padme cloak, and it looks very, very thick. Yes. I mean, all like of these... They used like, ma like material for this. So... I'm going to price it at like 250 350 for just the cloak itself. It might be more though. I think I'm actually down I'm actually not pricing it high high enough. Well, and not only that, but if I mean if it's $5000 just to get into the hotel, mm -hmm. these things aren't going to be cheap. No. Um, and plus they do look very high quality. I I mean, honestly, I kind of want to get some head tails whether they're uh to Gruten or um Twilic head tails. Um, I wonder so if cool. I can ask people, there are some people, I'm not going to name them, but I know there are some people that I know that might be going, if I give them the money, can they bring <laughs> me back this one thing? I'm going to, I'm going to text them right away after this. So I don't forget. I'm going to, I'm going to text them. So the kid, you happen to buy an extra one, but that Just was also one. something that we were talking about too, yes. because something Let's that's really big with Disney uh, merchandise it are the people that go to these places and then buy like 20 or 30 the resellers. the resellers. And from the way it looks, I don't think that that's going to be a possible thing. A lot, I mean, you might be able to buy one or two, maybe three if you're going to get there, but I don't think they'll let you buy too many because they well, want guests at the hotel to be able to buy them and wear them. Well, I was going to be kind of cynical and say, if they want guests at the hotel, maybe they'll lower the price. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, that's my knee jerk response. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love Disney. You guys know I buy a lot of, I have a lot of Disney merch. I love going to the parks. I love spending money on Disney merch because I like to have the Disney merch. But even I and Dustin have looked at this and be like, well, I mean, these are the two people who planned out our first day on, on Galaxy's Edge. Like we knew we were going and like, we think this is how much money we're going to drop. We came very close to that and we estimated high. Yeah. So like, we're not afraid to like give Disney our money because we're big fans, but like, it's so expensive that it's, it's really out of reach for most people late to the party mentioned literally just a, a few moments ago that the rooms supposedly are small. Yeah. I don't know. They I want to look, look up small. the plan. It looks like they're just like a bed. Yeah. Room for like a bed and maybe like a desk and you get like a bathroom. Right. But of course, people... if those, if what they describe of this experience mm -hmm. is even half true, you're not going to be spending much time in the bedroom. You probably will go to the bedroom, change, and then leave. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, you come home, I mean, come back to the room, shower, go Sleep. to bed, wake up, and leave again. Yeah. So you're hardly ever in there because you're experiencing the hotel itself mm -hmm. but this seems like so much fun i know and so i really want to like, go yeah like something like we've really been asking for for a really long time to where it is a way to be 
in the world of Star Wars. Yeah. To really feel like you are in the movies, like you're in the universe, like a galaxy far, far away. So I'm just really excited to maybe someday, someday we'll be able to experience it. Someday, one day. It's just, when I think about dropping that much money on a domestic trip, even though it's a Star Wars thing, I'm just thinking the five thousand dollars. Like I could take that and I to New Zealand and have a grand old time yeah, in a different for like country two weeks. for a whole different kind of experience. Like I would, I would have no problem dropping that much money on an international trip. You know, to to be in the culture and and see and experiencing different things. And like I love Star Wars, but like that's two days. It's two days, and it goes by so fast. You know, like normally you can't even check in until like 3 p.m. So is that how it works? You know, just don't sleep for those days. <laughs> just just have it to I where. I must stay awake. Yep. Just, I have to stay, you get coffee. there and you just stay, you spend those three days awake and then you fall asleep on the airplane home. Yes. Late to the party says, when you want to go, let us know. Do you guys mean New Zealand or Tokyo Disney or um, Galactic Star Cruiser. All of the above. All of the above. Our new travel partners. We've been we'll wanting be to. late to the party. Look, we know late to the party can hang because we shared a hotel with them during Comic-Con. And if there's anybody you want to test your f- true friendship with, you share a hotel with them during Comic-Con and see how that it was the best experience ever we mm-hmm. even had a pizza party at yep. the end we had a we had a pizza party at, at the end uh it was fantastic it's a party just says yes okay <laughs> done when it's safe to do all the, all the traveling when new zealand finally i think let let foreigners travel again because i think right now there's still borders are still closed but when they can let's go man the food is so good in new zealand we got to get some cheese <laughs> it's it's so the cheese in New Zealand. I've never been. Excellent. I'll just take Wendy's word for it. Anything I ate was good. You know what I didn't? This is gonna sound so freaking basic, like a basic tourist. And I said this to my group, but we didn't have time because we were there for to work. We were there for tour visit for for a set visit. We had like one day that we had. Uh, no, it wasn't a whole day. It was like a half day that we had for free that we could do whatever. But we ended up just kind of like going back to this one place that we didn't get to fully experience. I kind of wanted to go to their McDonald's to see how different their mcdonald's was to like the american mcdonald's honestly it is kind of fun sometimes but it sounded going really to, basic in my head nobody supported going to a different country to. and going to something that you're like oh mcdonald's yeah i know this and you look at the menu and you're like well i don't know any of these these yeah. are so different are you talking about like the, the when well, we went to some international mcdonald's mm-hmm. yeah when we went to like japan and did Taiwan. we go into a japan japanese mcdonald's no, I don't it think was in we Taiwan. did. It was in Taiwan because in Japan we had only a few days. So we were at Tokyo Disneyland, Tokyo Disney Sea, and on the third day, and I was like, let's go into actual Tokyo proper and let's like get ramen, let's get street food, let's do vending machines. And we didn't even think about we actually didn't see a McDonald's. We went to a Starbucks. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's just fun to go to different countries and like see the things that are familiar but different kind of a thing yeah yeah i mean we don't i mean you may not even get anything um while you're there but just to go in and kind of look at the menu and kind of see what's a little bit different like that's cool and then you go somewhere else to get some authentic food of that region yeah so i think that's pretty much it on the um d23 stuff oh i missed one news uh the guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind that is that really cool roller coaster that's going to be in florida uh because they got the room for it over there to expand um and that's going to be open to guests in summer of 2022 and glenn close will be reprising her role as nova prime for this ride so i'm pretty sure we'll see her in like the pre-show and maybe hear her voice uh on on the on the ride or something like that very jealous so i definitely want to plan like a Florida theme park trip. Late to the party talking to you guys. We're let's <laughs> let's do it together. We can share a hotel oh, room. Florida. Can, that, that would be a fun one to do. Yeah, we can see my friends from back home. Um, uh, maybe do a, like a one shot night. Oh, that'd be fun for D D. That could oh, be fun. Oh yeah. Um, but like let's do not just Disney, but let's do Universal as well. Cause I want to go to Harry Potter over there too, because they have Diagon Alley, which is something we don't have on the West Coast yet. Um, let's see any other type of news uh da, 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 what is this okay so yeah the, oh, yeah, we'll get, the, the, the progress on the tron uh ride that is coming to uh florida as well and i coming think to the magic kingdom yes oh here's one thing we heard about for the west coast for 
downtown Disney. They're doing some renovation. The next evolution, if you will, uh, as said in this article here, is being planned with work starting January of 2022, the multi-year project. So there's going to be a lot of constructions. Constantly at downtown, going Disney. On at downtown Disney. Yeah. To reimagine downtown Disney District will include an even broader collection of shopping, dining, and entertainment experiences. What I did hear, because we know that they took out the AMC that's out there. Yeah. Which was like, I guess not many people were going there to see movies anyhow. It was really more of a shopping, you know, Disney centric experience because you're coming out of Disney. You have to walk through downtown Disney to get to the Disneyland Hotel mm -hmm. um, because it's unlike the, what's the other one called? The one that's attached to get Disney California Adventure. That one, mm -hmm. that one, you don't have to walk through. You can just kind of, you know, if you're in California Adventures, you can exit and enter the park that way. But they're taking away oral sandwiches again for the second time. And yeah, they took it out, put it in, took it out. No, no this is it. This, this is, is the done. last one. And I'm so upset. The sandwiches is really, really good. It's very popular. I don't know why they decided. Just put it, just leave it. Just leave it and put it in the park. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a thing. I mean, downtown Disney has been needing a facelift. They've been getting little nips and tucks here and there because, what, they took away the House of Blues. They redid yeah. a lot of their storefronts. They did a lot of their restaurants. So to have just one big overhaul. I think is probably a really good idea just to kind of redo the downtown Disney district. Yeah. Uh, there's also, you know how at downtown Disney, they closed it because of the pandemic, but the Void VR. Was oh, theirs. that was so cool. Well, they've got a whole new thing that with, they're working with um, ILM and um, LAB. It's like a Darth Vader. It's a different one. I don't know what it's called, but it's a, a, supposedly free to try. So I'm going to look it up and see if they can Ooh. get an appointment to go. I'm pretty sure they've gotten pretty good at wiping down things, but I can bring our own wipes and just like do a quick before we put them <laughs> on our faces. We'll do it ourselves yeah. just in case. Or we can like <laughs> wipe our faces afterwards so um there is that bit of news for downtown disney and then for uh disney theme parks for on the west coast so disneyland world of color and fantastic is finally coming back to disney as well as um the fantastic. electric light parade i am so excited back. for that too i mean that is it is so weird that they've put so many other parades on the main street of disneyland that have been bigger lights, bigger technology, brighter this, more of that. And all we really want to see is the original electrical parade. That do, one. Do, 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 yeah. Wait, don't you. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> but honestly, I love that show. I mean, it, I don't know if it's just just the biggest dose of nostalgia that you can really get since we did grow up on Disney that it's. Yeah, I just love it. It's so much fun. The tune's very catchy and simple. The technology has been around for decades, and it will always just make me so happy and give me the biggest grin on my face every time I watch it. Yeah, um, I think uh, Chris's Choice DM'd over just a quick little tease video, and I'm like, Dustin! Like, from the other it's side coming of the back! It's coming back! He's like, what's coming back? The electric light for it! He's like, we have to go! So uh, we love that very, very much. It's like one of the first parades I ever experienced as a child uh, in Florida when I visited Walt Disney World for the first time. My aunt took me and she's like, you've got to watch this parade. I'm like, what is a parade? What is that? She told me. My mom was just like, sit down and enjoy the show. And I was like, all right. And she then you like, food. I didn't yay. like the beginning because they had the, now they have Goofy and Donald. Or maybe the chipmunks, they sit on top of the balls. Oh, yeah. But before that's right. they had like the Harley Quinn type of like clown looking thing. Oh, yeah. And they laughed they at you. Those. I didn't, not laugh at you. They were, they were laughing <laughs> and they're looking at you. But I didn't like that because yeah, I don't nope, like clowns. Nope. So, and I was like, Ugh. but the rest of the, the parade is beautiful. I remember the pumpkin carriage all like lit up. It's, and her dress lit up. Beautiful. All right, you guys. I think that is it. Yep, think we've that gotten is it. through a lot of stuff today. There's even more um, D23 stuff tomorrow. I don't know exactly what they're going to do with it because, again, I wasn't expecting the whole day to be just about theme parks. So I'll keep an eye on what is happening, and then we will probably talk about it on Wednesday for the live stream. So there you guys have it. That is our stream for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and do the thumbs up because it helps us get more visibility right here on YouTube. And we want to let you know that um, starting next week when Hawkeye comes out, we will be doing uh, a reaction to Hawkeye, but 
we're not going to do a normal reaction to episode two, uh, sorry, to episode one and two, because technically we already saw it at the launch event in the theater. We saw it like, at the, at the L cap. Thank you so much, Disney and Marvel for the invite. So I don't really want to call it a reaction because we've already seen it. We know it's, it's coming. It's going to be more of a review. So of it'll thoughts. be a, Spoiler filled review. We will put in the footage from the show as well. There's going to be a little bit of, there's actually a vlog coming on Monday that, you know, takes you guys with us to the launch event. So episode one and two is going to, you know, the, the reaction, it's going to be a little bit different, but the third one, third episode, it'll be a normal reaction. Like how you've seen us react to Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision and Loki. Yeah. Yep, we're okay. all good. All right, you guys. Um, so if you want to uh, follow us as we do other things, you can find us obviously on social media. But Dustin's been, do Dustin's been doing a fair amount of streaming. So if you want to check him out, he is at twitch.tv slash Darth Zany. Let me go ahead and put that in the chat real quick. And I just want to let you know, if you want to talk a little bit about Sunday for the Dat Network, Oh, yeah. The pirate game that we're playing. Well, I'll put this in. Oh, yeah. So on Saturday on the Datwin Network on Twitch, Wendy and I will be playing our Pathfinder um, role playing game um, called Voyage of the Siren Song, where we get to play pirates and do some piratey um, adventures. Mm -hmm. um, I play Eek, the um, um, Hobgoblin Alchemist, and Wendy plays um, Aradia, who is the human witch. Um, it is a lot of fun. Come check us out. Later today, um, I will be playing on Twitch at Darth Zany with my good friend Slitlid Blake, and we're going to be playing, trying to finish up our world domination of civilization. And I don't mean world domination by us taking over the world, the world taking over us. You're not going to snap them? Snap what? You're not gonna snap them like Thanos. World oh domination. no way! <laughs> no, no, wow, no, no, no. that we're was being, that was a we're being reference. dominated. We're gonna by just the walk world. away from that. <laughs> we're just gonna walk away from that. And for anybody who is interested in watching me and Dustin be pirates and a, and a goblin and a witch, you can find us tomorrow night over at the below address twitch twitch.tv slash the dat network, uh, and we're gonna start the show at 6 p.m. PT. There you have it, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We love you so, so, so much. Thank you for your continuous support, and we will see you, if not on our various streams, then we will see you on Wednesday for the next Movie Couple Live. Bye, you guys. <laughs>